Hey, fellow Restopians, welcome back to Restopia. Um, so our video is going to be called I Love Longines, uh, which I do. Um, and I am going to compare, uh, as two watches get, get compared a lot, is the Longines Zulu Time. This is the larger size. I think it's 42 mil. Uh, I know they have a 39 now. And the Tudor GMT 41 mil. Um, these get compared a lot. Um, um, I am. This is going to be a ramble, but I've decided what to do. I'm going to do a ramble because I don't have time <laughs> to uh, to do it properly. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this the last ramble. So going forward, because I've got quite a few subscribers now. Thank you very much to all my new subscribers. I hope you like the content. I need to make more of an effort. So I'm going to redo this video without it being a ramble. I'm going to do it in a in a different style just the same as i've got my new mouse mat here this is my mouse mat which is normally over there the green one that i've been using previously is also my mouse mat but it's a horatech kind of um tally thing um that i got but it's kind of gone a bit weird now because it's old and um i cleaned it and it, it doesn't really it's all bendy now and rubbish so i've got this super large it's so big it fills the screen but it's actually 80 but it's 80 by 40. Uh, lovely thing. Um, really pleased I got this. So I've moved this over to the videoing area uh, for this video. Um, and it marks a start, a turning point, hopefully. I'm going to uh, redo this video, but with in a more formatted style. Keep the uh, waffle down, keep the ums and ahs down. Uh, probably won't be editing, but I'll do it in... Uh, I did. I posted a video of a, a Breitling uh, Chronomat GMT which was in a very succinct formula. And I did that really just to show I can do a video in two minutes and tell you about a watch. No one really commented on it. But anyway, let's stick to uh, today's ramble. And as I said, I'm going to redo this again in a, in a different format, really just comparing these two. Um, there are going to be some other additions today. So what else have I been doing? Uh, so I went into uh, Watchtown yesterday and I got uh, my link for my... Uh, Grand Seiko G, I thought I'd remember it, GHB, GBGH273 or something, uh, the Shubun Autumn, which I absolutely love. Now, I said I wouldn't go on and on about uh, sizing uh, again, but I did get the full link yesterday. So uh, the young guy, young young man in the shop was kind enough, lovely guy, was kind enough to uh, put the link that I had to purchase in. Uh, and then I think he was he bit off more than he could chew because... I said, well, what you've got to do first is take the two part links out and then put the full link in, which made it three mil. Um, three mil. There was a three mil increment that um, I didn't have without purchasing a, a, a new full link. Um, it's actually still a bit tight, but that's because my wrist has gained some weight. But at least I've got that full. I've got the you know the option to have it in three mil increments smaller, which I didn't have without purchasing. Anything. Anyway, I won't go on, go on about that too much. I, I might do another video. Uh, one last video on that. Um, again, it depends what happens in the watch world. But there are some other YouTubers now. I know Andy from the English Watch um, is saying that he's going to do a video on watch shops, not knowing that the they're not half links. Anyway, won't go on about that. But uh, that is at least I've got that size. I mean, it can only be three mil bigger than this by taking the full link back out and putting the two half links in. And it was a bit wobbly with that, but you know, it's a three mil increment and a lot of micro adjusts are three mil increments. But anyway, back on to the Longing. So title is I Love Longing, which I do. Now these two watches get compared a lot. Oh, I just, I've got that here. I've got my uh, black base steel here. Um, I'll do a state of the collection, uh, a new state of the collection soon. Um, not sure if this is, I guess this has been on the channel before, but I do love the black base steel. It was discontinued, but my lovely AD reached out to me and said, we've got a black base steel left if you want one. Um, I managed to just scratch it up badly the first day I wore it by hitting it on a bollard. Anyway, but um, yeah, I do love this. I'm not massively into aluminium bezels. Uh, I know this is just a thin steel insert, but um, I prefer them to aluminium inserts, which would just scratch. I mean, if I had whacked this one, on what I whacked this one on, uh, that would now be all silvery, scratched off, and it would look awful. And it would I would have to I would have to get a new bezel insert or a new bezel, really, I suppose. Or would they put an insert in? I'm not sure. I, I'm not a fan of aluminium bezels, but more on that in a minute. Um, 
And um, yeah, but this one, it's just scratched the steel. So it doesn't really, all, all of the bits with paint on or whatever, they're all recessed. So they, they don't notice. Um, I missed the uh, pip, so that was fine. Um, and the edge is scratched. Uh, the edges scrap but you know it's a watch that i wear i do love it it can be refurbed it can be brought back to to life i do love the black base steel uh if you want to know uh, more about that let me know in the comments below and maybe i'll do a video on it these are both off of their straps at the moment because they both come with this awful or i think awful um faux riveted um tudor uh bracelet it's actually got a bit of a scratch on it. I've never worn it. It's still stickered. I've obviously got two of these. But this is an, uh, an unworn stickered, uh, stickered one, even though it's got scratches on the uh, clasp. Um, I wonder who did that, because I obviously didn't do it. Anyway, it can be brushed. It can be uh, brushed out, you know, taken out quite easily. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, and I have got one that I do wear that these have been on. But these bracelets do not fit me, So, and I really, really do not like them. But I'll get onto that in a minute. Uh, because the subject of the video is is Tudor uh, v um, Longines. I love Longines. Now these two get compared a lot. I'm going to do, as I say, I'm going to do another video. But yesterday I went into. I'm just going to ramble about these now. Um, I think I think and have said in the past that the Tudor on that bracelet, boom, is the better watch, and I, I kind of stand by that. But when you compare the uh sum of its parts uh with each other um which i'm going to briefly do now without giving them any numbers but I'm, i think the new video is going to be a top gear style you know uh or a, a doug demuro style um daily what does he call it daily he calls it something when he does his videos and gives them numbers uh i haven't watched a doug demuro video in ages but uh yeah should should revisit revisit him he's a he's a he's a, he's a cool guy he's a funny guy i like doug demuro um, but, uh, yeah, just comparing them. So price wise, I think this is about a thousand pounds more than this one. Um, but yesterday, the reason that this came up was I went to revisit the Longines Hydro Conquest GMT, uh, which I've only seen in black previously, and I didn't really like it very much. Uh, yesterday I saw it in blue and I took my Zulu time with me so I could do a, a like for like comparison of them. Um, they are quite different, um, but I do like the Hydro Conquest GMT, despite its faults. No watch is perfect. Uh, the case I, I commented before, it's, it's a bit weird on the top. It's not as as kind of machined as this. I can't really explain it. It looks a bit sort of bubbly, but it, it didn't look too bad yesterday uh, in comparison. It's quite sharp on the underside, but so is this one. So it was really nice having them next to each other. Um, I still think this is the better watch. Um, but I really do like the Hydro Conquest GMT. I uh, prefer a GMT, uh, sorry, a dive bezel on a GMT rather than a GMT bezel. Um, I don't like the gap and the fur between the part, uh, first link and the end link, but, you know, again, it's one of those things you just kind of get used to. It. It's not the end of the world, but overall, I think it's a really, really nice watch. The guy offered me a discount on it. Um, oh, I'm half tempted to beat him up on that discount. <laughs> get a bit more <laughs> do that thing walk away phone him up offer offer him some money over the phone um where he can't uh you know uh you know have his, use his charm on me and it would purely be about pound notes but anyway let's quickly get back to this so comparing these um as i say they're very different watches i don't think i almost don't think they should be compared uh this has a what does it have 24 click bezel this has a 48 click bezel, uh, quite why you have a 48 click bezel, I don't know. Maybe there are some time zones in the world that have quarter of an hour differences, I don't think there are. Um, I think I think there might be, but really is that a thing? I mean, if it was a, a Rolex GMT, it'd have a 12 click bezel, it would literally go boom, boom, boom. Oh, nearly did that properly. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Of the sum of its parts, you know, this one has ceramic bezels. This one has a aluminium bezel, which I don't like. Um, the dials. So uh, there's so much to say about this dial that I like. I'm not massively into black. Let, right, the colour. I mean, this is like a Pepsi, traditional Pepsi kind of thing. I don't really like Pepsis. I much prefer Batmans if it was, a, I wish, you know, if they'd done this in a blue and black, I would definitely have got that over this one. Um, the date window, this one's, this one wins again. This one's colour match. This one isn't. 
Um, I think it works better at six o'clock. I'm not massively into a six o'clock uh, date window particularly, but it just works better here. I'd rather there were no date and there was an actual six uh, uh, numeral there. Um, but yeah, this dial, I mean, it's almost perfect uh, in my opinion. This is just, there's nothing wrong with this dial. It's just quite plain in comparison. The only thing I would say about this dial that's not perfect, in my opinion, is I really, really cannot stand parts of the second hash marks on the dial. They serve no purpose whatsoever because you, unless it's a chronograph, you're never going to use them. Even if it was a chronograph, you'd never use them. Um, but it does, sorry if I'm holding this in the light and getting a bad reflection on it, but um, it kind of goes with the style of this watch. And I, I I, I really do. There's there's some things on this that I don't like, but they all go with the style of this watch, which makes me love it. Um, so bezel, aluminium, uh, old dial, that's where we were. Uh, Apart, It's perfect. I mean, you know, this one you've got like round indices. This one you've got Arabic numerals, numbers, uh, which are obviously harder to make, you know, and they're, they're loom filled. Uh, they've got uh, silver edges to them. Um, really, really nice sizes I, I i like the handset i mean i don't mind the um oh what's it called i forgot what it's called the uh the tudor the tudor hour hand which i completely forgot what it's called um it's too early in the morning um and i quite like that but you know it's, it's a nice handset nice counterweight to the second hand i love the way that they are uh, on the pinion, all the hands are like uh, sort of staggered, like a little mini pyramid. Not staggered; they're shaped like a little mini pyramid, so they get con you know, consecutively smaller, which gives it a sort of a, a really nice shape. And you can you can see the uh, well, I don't know what you call the the bit that goes on the pinion of a hand, but you can see all of them because they're layered, layered, not staggered. Whereas normally they're just sort of plonked one on top of each other. Um, I mean, they are slightly layered, but not so much that you notice it on this. Uh, the dial, I think the sunburst effect is, is perfect. Sometimes dials can be overly sunburst. Um, I think the uh, the colours are great. I really, really think blue and orange go well together. Much better than blue and red, uh, I feel. Or in the case of the Hydro Conquest GMT, it's blue and light blue. I quite like blue and light blue. I've got a watch with blue and light blue on. Um, but really, I think this is the best combination. But again, I've got another watch with that's that's different, so it's nice. But in isolation, I think blue and orange just go really well together. The 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 text. So this is printed on. This is uh, a combination of print. Well, it's printed on text, but you've got the applied logo and the applied stars. I really like those stars. I really like. Uh, why Zulu time is called Zulu time. I think that's uh, a cool thing. I wanted to do a video on that, but I couldn't find the original uh, uh, information as to how it, uh, about it. So I couldn't do a proper video, but it is a really cool thing. Why, what Zulu time is. It just, it basically, the short version is, it's GMT, it's UST, um, Universal Standard Time. But I love those stars. Something about having, it's like, it's like rate in itself. I'm a five star watch. What are you going to do about it? Um, so the dial is uh, is is effectively per uh, perfect. I love the way the seconds hand, the diamond on the second hand completely covers the diamond above the indice. Uh, well, the diamond indice, you know, it's, it's part numeral and part diamond. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it, it, that dial is 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 perfect, uh, really. And as I say, the little hash marks they kind of go with the the whole theme of the watch. You know, the aviator sort of Art Deco theme to it. Uh, the other, the working outwards, I say, ceramic bezel, so beats aluminium hands down. Uh, the dimensions of it. So this is a thinner bezel track. This is thicker. Obviously, that means for the same size watch, although this is a tiny bit bigger. Um, you've obviously got a smaller dial and that's always going to be, you, you know, that's always going to be a compromise, isn't it? You've got, it's got to be one or the other, or you just make the watch so big that you have both, but that's always, that's always going to be a thing. Um, I think it is a bit odd to have so many numbers slash Arabic numerals on the whole, what on the watch as a whole, but that gives it a different look. So again, and it's a look that I like, um, bezel, uh, sorry, uh, crystal. So this is fully domed. Uh, this is kind of a raised flat crystal, both uh, sapphire, obviously. Um, 
just different really i think this this goes well you don't really notice that in terms of uh, uh i think the thing with this one is that if you knock that not only are you potentially go i mean it may protect that aluminium bezel a bit but you're going to chip the uh, sapphire so uh this this just works uh much much better um crowns oh bezel sticking with the bezel this has uh quite a, a very nice bezel action with virtually no back play as does the Tudor, but the Tudor, as I say, is a 48 click and this is 24, which I prefer. There's too many clicks on that. Um, the bezel edge on this is much more, is rougher. Uh, is that the right word? It's a finer bezel edge on the Tudor, which is is not the greatest to click. Uh, I would say bezel action. I actually, yeah, I mean, I prefer, it's a better bezel action with less clicks, which also helps. So yeah, Tude, the uh, Longines is definitely winning so far, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> bracelet, as I've said, I really don't like the uh, faux rivet bracelet. Um, it doesn't fit me. It doesn't fit a lot of people. It has micro adjust, but that micro adjust is pretty much exactly the same size as one link, no part links. So the micro adjust really effectively becomes pointless because you can't use the micro adjust to make the watch fit you. You can only use the micro adjust on this one to make, um, to change it if your wrist size changes due to like heat or, or eating too much. But you can't actually use that to make it, it's no different to changing a link. So if you can't get it to fit you by taking full links in and out, that ain't gonna help you. Um, and that's bad. And the reason for that is, as you can see here or here, is it there or there? Oh no, because I haven't got it fully in. But the reason for that is that's in the middle micro adjust. If I put that to the tightest one, that faux rivet will be right up against the, the clasp. So you can't have another, what it needs is, well, it even needs part links or it needs um, another position on the micro adjust. But you can't put one on that side of it because the bracelet will not go into the clasp because that faux rivet will be stopping it, which is another reason I hate the faux rivets. Um, I guess they could have got four on here by kind of spacing them out differently. Or oh, I'm losing all my end links and my spring bars. But yeah, it doesn't fit a lot of people. Doesn't fit me. One of the reasons I don't wear it. I think if it did fit me, I would wear. Uh, I would have it on it. I have worn the other one um, that I've got, but it, it doesn't fit me, which is the main reason um, for for not wearing it. So bracelet wise. Uh, again, the, the Longines wins. Uh, is a really nice bracelet. It has nice micro adjust. I was going to measure the, I reckon they're two mil positions on that micro adjust. Um, I actually readjusted this because my wrist has swollen a bit recently. Um, so all my watches are a bit tighter than they were. So I simply popped that back out. Uh, I've actually put it back in again now because then it felt too loose. I mean, even two mil uh, sometimes isn't enough, but it's the best option you're going to get two mil. So, uh, so uh, it, it is what it is, you know, if it's not perfect. Um, so yeah, bracelet, nice quality bracelet. I mean, the Tudor, I'll come back to everything about that. But uh, overall, I prefer the Longine bracelet. So it's, it's a nice bracelet, it's got micro adjust. What I particularly like about this is the way, so those, this is quite a fussy bracelet for me normally, but because uh, those polished sections are not just polished lines. They're actually chamfered. I'm not sure if you can see that. They're actually chamfered at sort of, let's say, 45 degrees for, for uh, you know, for argument's sake. And that gives it, um, uh, I, I almost might prefer it not to be polished, but just to be chamfered. But again, it goes with the watch. So what, oh, crown. I got sidetracked with the bezel track, which is very, very fine and not very nice. Um, which is another thing going off, off track a bit. That's why the uh, Pelagos 39 is so nice because it has a much, uh, the, the, the knurling, if you if you can call it, it's not really knurling, the ridges are much coarser. That's the word I was looking for uh, on both the bezel and the crown, which works much better. But going back to the crown, because we're kind of looking at all the points of the watch. Um, I'm not massively keen on this crown. It's like, you know, when you get the, when you get some, uh, little vial and you have to snap off the twist off the end that, that's kind of what that looks like but again it kind of goes with the watch and in some ways uh it's kind of i don't know in some ways it's got coarser uh, ridges on which i prefer to this one so 
pretty much of all those things, and as I say, I am going to do a proper video comparing these two, uh, and I might delete this one, maybe not. Um, pretty much for the sum of its part, every part is nicer on the Longines. Um, potentially, the one part that I haven't mentioned that might not be nicer is the movement. Now, obviously, the movement in this, I would say, um, is I've never had a, uh, before you all like uh, comment in the comments, I've never had a problem with the date on this, but maybe I don't wear it enough to notice if it did miss a day or something. Um, but um, the movement is better in the Tudor than in the um, Longines. And one of the reasons for that, one of the, I mean, you know, bracelet's a bit more janglier than that one. I can't jangle it because it's on, on the, but we, as I say, we'll come back to that. But the movement is is really the only thing that I could say is definitely better in the Tudor in terms of its parts. Um, this is, I don't know if you can hear that. This is a very noisy rotor. It's the noisiest rotor. Um, I mean, if you study in rotor noise, they'll all, you'll, you'll suddenly hear them all. But this is really obviously noisy. Um, you know, and the movement when you're when you're uh, adjusting, setting, winding, adjusting the Tudor, it's much much nicer than when you're setting, winding, and adjusting the Longines. So, but really, you know, these things aren't uh, mega important in term. You know, I've got a lot of watches that are worse on every front than this. Um, so this is really still real high quality. Um, but just as a comparison, that's my. Uh, take on I was going to say my brief take but actually if I do a proper video it'll actually be shorter than this one um, <laughs> but um, so getting to the crux of it then although I've just said that everything apart from the movement and that the movement really doesn't matter too much as long as it works because um, the movement isn't the big deal for me in a watch it's all the other things that I've just mentioned and I've just said that all the other things on this watch are better than this one but as to which watch is better um, this is a bit odd but if I was a if you were a blind guy and you were just putting this on, taking it off, apart from that bezel action, maybe, and the winding of it, I'm losing it now, aren't I? But my point is that this is just higher quality. The daily on-off of this one in terms of the feel on the Longines is nowhere near as nice as the on-off uh, experience of the Tudor. So taking it off, putting it on, wearing it. Uh, apart from the bracelet not fitting me but the bracelet will fit a load of people um, and a lot of people will probably prefer the design of this than of this so like for like the Tudor is a better watch in my opinion but I kind of think the Longines is a better purchase and if I had to sell one of these it would definitely be the Tudor in fact I have tried to sell the Tudor uh, but I didn't want it um so there you go. There you go, Longines, uh, Longines fanboys. You're going to love this one, aren't you? Um, but yeah, I do do really and always have really liked the Longines, despite its, uh, you know, its shortcomings. But no watch is perfect. They all have their, you know, issues and plus points. But there are a lot of plus points with this Longines. And as I say, the new Hydro Conquest GMT um, is a really good watch for the money. Just make sure you get a discount on it because it's definitely available. Do not pay list for any uh, Longines or, or Tudor these days uh, come to that. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that little video. I just wanted to get something out um, so that I'm, I'm pumping some more content in and uh, you know people can have a look if they like. And yeah, like next time, maybe in the week, I'll do a proper comparison and you can uh, compare for the people that don't like the waffle waffle and you can compare the two and let me know what you think. But as always, let me know what you think of this one in the comments below. And if you've got any questions, uh, likewise, or any suggestions, go for it. But for now, have a great weekend. One wrist, live it.